while you guys are voting, I'm going to do my own version of Weeb Wednesday 2023 Gaudi. I did this last year. Let me see. Da -da. Keep in mind, um, not all games might be on the list. It's kind of like RNG in a way that not all the games is going to be on the list. So you can do your own version of it, but let's, let's start here. Okay. Volcano Princess versus... Monster Menu, the Scavengers Cookbook. Oh my god, this game was a disaster. This I mean I mean like the, the way that you can customize your characters is good. Hey, we leveled up. <laughs> Small It was uh it was not good. There's like no story. And then I thought it would be really cool. I thought just from seeing, like, I thought you, uh, like, kill monsters, get items. With that items, you can cook, you eat it, and then you get stronger. That's basically what it was advertised as. But it was not really like that at all. Volcano Princess, I actually played it till the end. It was, it was, uh, it was really fun. I think my daughter just became rich. Rich and married a noble, right? I think she became rich and noble. My, my, my girl, Tomahawk, she was, like, super strong. Definitely Volcano Princess takes this round. Dang. What? Oh my gosh, what a matchup. Wait, what a matchup, dude. What a matchup, dude. Both in the top 10. Currently, both of them are in top 10. So, Kapon Kingdom Connect, which is basically Do Kapon Kingdom, and Final Fantasy 16. I'm, I'm just letting you guys know you gotta vote, okay? Make sure you vote while I'm doing this. Is that Chibli? What is what kind of noise is Chibli making? Oh, have you seen a guy fly like that? I don't think so. I don't think you have. Rising flame. <laughs> oh, oh, have you seen a guy fly like that? I don't think so. I don't think you have. Rising Flame! <laughs> I definitely did not do Rising Flame. <sighs> Honestly, I love Dokapon Kingdom a lot. But as a person who does not have enough friends to play Dokapon Kingdom, I gotta go with the single player, which is Final Fantasy 16. Oh, okay. This is this is a good matchup. Super Mario RPG and the Tokyo Psychodemic. This game was very confusing. We played it as a demo. The, the, oh, he must have come here and buy something. Crazy. Well, you might think like actually this is an amazing graphic, but oh, that's our guy. If if you have not seen me play Tokyo Psychodemic, basically it's it's not like based on real life. And and you you get like anime characters, but um some like weird shit happens. 
Like, for example, for the demo, what happened was a guy sat down right here where you see, like, the red box. And then he just, like, turned into a flame and died. And then anything above his kneecaps, I think, burned completely and obviously died. And, and we're basically trying to figure out, you can see, you, and we're trying to figure out what happened, like how he just combusted into flames and obviously died. And then uh, there's some like clues and then there's like, you know, it, it sounded really cool. But then when I played the game, it was okay-ish. Like the pacing wasn't that good. Um, the, the video game, like the, the music wasn't that good. It, it was like really cool, except it didn't really, really work out. But to be fair, it was the demo. So when the, the full game comes out, it might be different. But there were, a, it was a lot of, as you can see, just watching CCTV footage. And it was not that fun. It was just like legit just watching cars going by. I'm like, oh, that's our guy. Okay, let's follow him. Okay, he went, he turned right in this alley. Okay, and then we go look for the camera. It sounds fun if the pacing was good, but then the pacing was not good. It was hella long. And then Super Mario RPG. Old games were insanely mean. <laughs> Super Mario RPG, from what I have played, what I have learned is that it's just mostly Paper Mario. There's, it was just, I'm sure the Paper Mario came after Super Mario RPG, or I don't, I don't really care. It really was Paper Mario. And it's not like Paper Mario is bad. Actually, after playing this game, I bought two 3DS Paper Mario games because y'all were saying oh these paper marios are like really good so i'm like oh my gosh i gotta go buy it so i did so it's super mario rpg oh my god dragon quest 3 and the great ace attorney chronicles okay this is a hard matchup bro Oh, okay. This is a hard matchup. I mean, first of all, Dragon Quest Three, known as the greatest JRPG ever made, and literally JRPG was started by Dragon Quest series. And out of Dragon Quest series, like one, two, three, three is the best. With, if there was no Dragon Quest, there would be no JRPG. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, why is it loading so long? Oh wait, she scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. <laughs> Oh my, she scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> what oh. am I even saying? Oh my, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm like, scat man. I'm, I'm. Oh my, she scared the fuck out of me. She scared the fuck out of me. Out of me. <laughs> I'm like rapping. That was amazing. Okay, okay. I remember I was like the great ace authority. I remember I played it, but I don't remember anything about it. It's the lady the professor died. Professor died and then our main character got accused of killing the professor, but it was actually the lady or something like that. Uh spoiler alert. I don't know, man. It's kind of like 
both are in the same basket. You know what I mean? Dragon Quest 3 is not different from any other Dragon Quest series. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles is not different from any other Attorney series. I don't know what to do, man. Ace Attorney is the obvious winner here. Excuse me? How so, man? Excuse me? It's obvious? Oh, how? No? It's not. How is it extremely obvious, dude? Are you... What are you saying? Dragon Quest 3 is not good? Are you hearing... Oh. I... I didn't... I meant, to... I meant to press the play button. I meant to press the play button. I was gonna play the music. <laughs> no, look! The, look at the mouse. It's, it's, it was like the play button was right here. Like, do you see how little it was? I meant to press this button, but then... I press this button. Oh man, dude. Whoopsies. Well, that makes things very um, easy. This one? Oh man, two. Bad? Two what bad games. Bad? Okay, wait, hold on. Mary Skelter 2. I liked it a lot. Mary Skelter Finale. I don't know what happened. They definitely, like Mary Skelter 2, the reason why I liked it about Mary Skelter 2 is that they did not focus on the story. It was more of a gameplay and less of a story and it was grindy and I liked it. I liked, I like grindy dungeon exploring games that is not story focused. But Mary Skelter Finale, they changed it up. They focused on the story. And things went south, honestly. It, like, oh, how do I explain it? The first 10 minutes of the game, we literally played the same first 10 minutes of the game in a different perspective five times. The same shit happens five times in a row. And it was story focused, which I hated. Because the story is shit, we all know it. The gameplay is fun. It's the same kind of dungeon crawling um, system. So I was like, what happened? They threw away the things that I liked. And then turned into something shit. So I was like, what the shit, man? And also, Master Detective Archives Rain Code. What a disappointment. I saw some people actually liking Rain Code, um, saying, you know, the Duncan Ropa dev actually was able to create an interesting new IP, etc., etc. How I played it, it really was not, that was not the case. The game felt very janky. It was very heavily story focused. I mean, Duncan Ropa is heavily story focused, but still, cool shit happens. In the first 10 minutes. And you just kind of draw into the story. Whereas the rain code. Instead of cool shit happening. It was more like. Lore. 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 And then. Something happens. And I'm not really interested in what happened. And then this girl shows up. And she is just annoying. More so than. Like attractive character. I was really disappointed in this game. Do I just cut anything? Oh, there it is. It is very Donkum Rompa esque. It is very Donkum Rompa esque. But the way they that the, the way you have to play the game, you have to take a baby step at a time, and it was really annoying. Like. I'm like, it's so obvious. Do I really have to point out the obvious things to get to the answer? 
I don't know, there were quite a lot that I really did not like, but it was definitely better than Mary Skelter finale. Okay. Two really good games here. I finished Bayonetta Origins Cereza and the Lo and the Lost Demon. I personally thought this game should have been on the list of the game of the year. To be fair, I did play this game in February, March, something like that. So it's uh it was still really early in the year, but the game was beautiful. The game was a little bit repetitive, but the story was good. The ending was excellent. Um, the music was really good. Visually, it was attractive. There were a lot that was happening that was very good. Like, very, very good. Let's see the clip. I remember, like, every time whenever I played this game on my stream, lots of people said, Wow, what is this game? This game looks fantastic. Hey. It was really fun. Bayonetta Origins. It was really fun. Like the character designs, I really hey. like. I really liked a lot. Like there's the, the dungeons. Not all dungeons were alike. There were there were some puzzles. There were some challenges. Um, and the storybook style. I really like this a lot. Now the Sea of Stars. Um, it is actually made. By Canadian? I'm I'm right? Quebecois? I think. And I really enjoyed it. Music was amazing. Visually also amazing. The gameplay is amazing. Oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Holy <laughs> Look at me, man. I'm timing things so good. Look at it. That's me timing it. Let's go! Holy! <laughs> but the boss fight was hard. I remember the boss fight was difficult. It went away. And then um, the, the great things about the Sea of Stars is that the characters are attractive. Like the um, I forgot this guy's name. The the chef guy, he's he's hilarious. Um, the story is kind of like, I guess genetic in a way that they just uh, they were trained to be the hero. One is trained to be like the moon, and the other is trained to be the sun, and they're the heroes, and they have to. Like, go on a journey to defeat the bad guy. And then, this guy, he's just the normal human dude. And he's not supposed to do that. But then, they're like, you know what, whatever, he's funny, let him join. The story is not, it wasn't, like, I didn't finish the game. It wasn't, like, unique. But, it was hilarious. Because of this human character, it was, it, it was really funny. But I think I gotta give it to Bayonetta Origin Cereza and the Lost Monster. This or Lost Demon. That should have been on the game of the year 2023. Or like on the list. Now, Tales of Zestiria, you'll be saying this game did not come out 2023. It doesn't matter, I played it 2023. I I played two or three Tales game. In 2023, and I was like, wow, dude, I'm like, tails pilled. Um, the Princess Guide, I was really surprised that someone actually voted for the Princess Guide. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that person is trolling or did not watch me play this game. Because I was saying, I was having fun. Like, I was having fun time when I was playing the Princess Guide. But then the chat was like, this game sucks. This game sucks. This game sucks. This game is definitely, you know, typical Wii Wednesday game. And I was like, chat, you don't get it. This is Nipponich software. 
you know, they make games like this. And honestly, the gameplay wise is challenging and it's fun. The story, I have no idea what the heck is happening. Story wise, I don't think no one really knew what the heck was happening story wise. Um, the characters were not that attractive. I think I picked the wrong one. I picked the angry witch lady. This girl. And she was not very attractive in the sound. Like the voices that they make is just like really repetitive. Yo, let's go. I did it. <laughs> what the heck? Even the cliff is like not that funny. Tales of Zestiria. <laughs> what am I singing? <laughs> okay, I remember I remember the story. I was like, what was the tales of this this Terrier? I remember the story. So it's this guy, he is he's like a human, but he's he can see the spirit. This guy is a spirit. He was despite he was a human, he was raised in the spirit island. And then the girl that you just saw, she got lost in the dungeon. And then um, main character saves her. Then he feels that she is in trouble. So he follows her and then goes into the human town. And then in the human town, I get blessed by the spirit um, to become like the savior. But then the path of becoming the savior is not easy. But then he's like, yeah, it's okay. I can do it. He goes like, she. And then he's like, look at me. I can defeat all the bad guys. Yeah, I remember. It's definitely Tales of Zestiria. Easy choice. Octopath Traveler 2. I remember I liked it. Stonks. I remember I got bankrupt and I was like, GG no re. Um, but some people actually voted for stonks. And I was like, what the heck? People voting for stonks? Did people actually enjoy watching stonks? Did they really like me freaking getting bankrupt? Oh, wait, hold on. Circle, right? They said circle? Circle's going down. I like watching stonks. Why is the Honda going up? Dude, and then remember, I had to alt F4 because uh, FBI was in front of my front door saying like, oh, it seems like you're doing something bad. And I was like, shit, I don't know how to get out of this trouble. So I had to alt F4. <laughs> Octopath Traveler 2. Yeah, Throne! Throne! I think I played more than one time. Because I really enjoyed the game. I remember I played it more than once. Yeah, I definitely played it. Oh, you know what? I liked it so much, I played it on my free time. That's what. I, I really liked that I played it on my free time. There was the Throne. I'm assuming this is... Oh yeah, this is the, the very early on. Oh, bless you, Kate. <laughs> like, the gameplay is really fun. I mean, you know, Octopath Traveler too. Music is amazing. Visually beautiful. Easy pick, Octopath Traveler 2. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh. It's the same game as Star Ocean, the second story R. It looks very similar to Octopath. No, 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 no it's the part that I freaking... Did I did is it? Is it when I die? No, why are there so many of them? No, 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 no. Why are there so many? One, two, three, four. By the way, I defeat all the slimes. Ah, okay, I remember. This game very much like Octopath 2, visually. And then the story, because this is the remake of 1990 game, the story, there are some parts that it kind of is outdated. So 
such as NPCs saying like, oh, hey, you're a girl. Why are you fighting? And then, or like, um, was it like, oh, you're sharing a room with a boy. Is that your husband or something like that? I don't know. Was there some, some dialogues that was uh, pretty much outdated, but it is what it is. It is a remake. And then the Tales of Symphonia remastered, also remastered. I like how Tales series, they just say remastered. Star Ocean series, they just say letter R. Although it's loading. I, I kind of remember... Um... They were in the shrine, but they got attacked. And then this guy, the wide shoulder blade dude. Uh, what the heck did just disappear, man? I was talking about him. But he's he's the bad guy or something like that? Wait. But also the story was very outdated as well. I think... But he... Oh, Colette is the girl. She's the she's basically like a angel or something like that. And the angel came down and saying like, "Hey, you gotta save the world" or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way. I remember this guy used yo-yo to fight. I like their his shoulder blades so. though. I remember saying like, oh my gosh, this dude's voice is so low. He must be 35. And then I think someone said, no, he's actually 21 years old. I'm like, there's no way this guy is 21 years old. No 21 year old voice is like that. <laughs> or it was like 18. Like the main character's age is 14 and then Kratos is like 18. Something like that. Anyways. Um... Uh, I really like Star Ocean though. I the visually was beautiful. I'll I'll pick Star Ocean. The second story R. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's the Fire Emblem engaged. I played that in the feb in February or uh, January twenty fifth. I think the game came out on January twenty fifth or something twenty third something like that. Um. All I can imagine, like, like it was okay. I remember the game was okay. What? Stop muting yourself. I don't remember the story. Well, I kind of do remember my story. It's that the main character can engage and then kiss the ring and becomes strong. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. 51% chance of hit! And I got hit! Same too. Her eyes are like my eyes. I don't know the story wise I don't remember like I don't really remember the story of the fire emblem engage it was oh wait wait yeah okay okay I remember that's my dragon mom and I am a dragon too but I fell asleep for a very long time for like thousands of years and then i think my mom who is the the goddess who saves who is like protecting the human world gets assassinated and i'm like hey what the heck man and the mom is like oh you gotta like take place and save save the save the place yeah, that's this is where they're getting like assassinated. Yeah, okay. And then 
The Exit 8 is kind of like horror, oh, horror game. Cleaning staff. Okay, we got things. Oh shit, okay, he walking fast. He walking fast. Okay, easy. But it was more like, it wasn't that scary. And I finished, I finished the Exit 8 as well. Ah, oh, cleaning staff. It's kind of like find, find the thing that was, that's different. It was supposed to be scary, but it wasn't that scary. Psychological horror kind of thing. Let's go with Fire Emblem Engage. Or Engage. Okay, now top 10. We're, that was top 20. Now we're going for top 10. Star Ocean, the second story R. And Bayonetta Origin Cereza and the Lost Demon. Now that we have seen all the clips, we're, we're going to move a little bit faster. I'm going to pick Bayonetta Origin Series and The Lost Demon. Really, really, really enjoy that game. Okay. Dragon Quest Three, The Seeds of Salvation, and Tales of Zestiria. Um, definitely, this is an easy pick. Dragon Quest Three. Okay, okay, Super Mario RPG, Fire Emblem Engage, in my opinion, it was more fun to play Fire Emblem Engage. Final Fantasy 16 and Octopath Traveler 2, easy pick, Final Fantasy 16. It was visually more beautiful. And more interesting. Okay, rain code. You do not. You do, you you're not even. You don't. You, you don't. You're not even supposed to be in top ten. This is crazy. Cause I, you know, I like. I don't know if you remember. I was so ready for the new IP from Danganronpa devs that I pre-ordered as soon as they announced rain code on E3. I was like, I don't care. This is gonna be amazing. I'm going to buy it. And I had, like, I thought it was going to be good. And when I got the game, I was so excited. And I played it, and I just got disappointed. And that betrayal, dude. Betrayal. Okay, the princess is go, Tomahawk. Oh my gosh. Okay, what the heck? It's top five already? Okay. Bayonetta Origins and Dragon Quest 3. Um I mean Dragon Quest 3 is a good game. It's an amazing game. It's a terrific game. But if it were to come out in year 2023. I think Bayonetta Origins, like the visually, it was beautiful. It was amazing, astounding. Okay, Volcano Princess and Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, um, uh, so. Volcano Princess, there wasn't really a gameplay. Like, there was a gameplay, but it was very, very, very simple. It was, it was so simple. You know what I mean? But, but with a huge, but, um, it was the closest game that got to the princess maker series princess maker 2 princess maker 3 both amazing game and volcano princess was able to get really close to princess maker 2 which is a high praise like my first ever game was basically the Princess Maker 2. And that game was amazing. That was that was an amazing game. And it just 
for some reason, I don't know why it took like 30 years for people to figure out how to make a game like Princess 2, but, but Volcano Princess was able to get that. That's like, that's pretty impressive. The only thing is that there isn't, like, there is a competition, but it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's not as satisfying as Princess Maker 2. Like, Princess Maker 2, when my daughter, like, defeats the god. I mean, here, she kind of defeats the god. But then, Princess Maker 2, there isn't really a story. Like, there isn't really a story. It's more of a gameplay. Volcano Princess is more of a story than the gameplay. Which is kind of weird, because the game is very much like Princess Maker 2. But then there's, like, the story of, like, who is this girl? You know what I'm saying? Like, what happened in the town? What happened to your wife? And then, like, your wife was the, the uh, what's it, like, the ghost of the monster that people th uh, thought they lived in the woods. But then she's actually the protector or something. I don't know, and then she was born or whatever. Story kind of like, yeah, wife was the volcano gone, but then they thought she was a ghost though, like the, like that's a there was a bad person or something. Well, um, Fire Emblem Engage, is it as good as the Three House? No. Visually, graphic wise about the same i think fire emblem has that i don't it's like it's almost like a clay-esque almost like the graphics seems like clay it's like it's, it's like made with clay and i kind of not really like i mean you know there's it's because of the limitation of nintendo switch i understand but i mean like visually it's not impressive it's kind of like i feel like i'm playing this game on the xbox 360 you know what i'm saying and they're doing they're doing their best to make the game impressive but i mean i don't go like whoa you know what i'm saying i don't go like whoa look at that visual um nah, it's so hard man it's so hard the story wise was also not that captivating because it was, you know, Three House was more like, you know, which one would you like to choose and rule the world? So, like, I had the power to do so. Whereas, like, as far as I know of what I play from Fire Emblem Engage, it was kind of like, you're the hero, save the world kind of a thing. Very typical JRPG story. <clears throat> I think I'm going to pick Volcano Princess. I really, really like Volcano Princess. Oh, okay. And then this guy just goes up. Okay. Because there's, there's nothing on the side. All right. Top three. Mm, Volcano Princess and Bayonetta Origins. This, this is easy. Bayonetta Origins, Cereza, and The Lost Demon. This game, it was amazing, man. Okay, another one. <laughs> Alright, final. This, this is kind of not fair. Because Bayonetta Origins, Cereza, and The Lost Demon, I finished it. Final Fantasy XVI, I did not finish it. So... Story-wise, I am more captivated by the Final Fantasy XVI because I don't know what happens at the end. Bayonetta Origins as well. Like, I I really enjoyed the game. Like, I loved the ending. Ending was really good. And, like, I remember I played the game and I finished the game. And then when I took a shower, I was thinking about the game and the ending of the game as I was... In the shower and how um Cereza's teacher even though she wanted to kill Cereza she still loved Cereza and I know that makes no sense but it made perfect sense to me like that that feeling of 
I don't know, it's it's a very complicated feeling, right? She wanted to save her own son. In order to do it, she needed to sacrifice Cereza. But then she also loved Cereza. So it's kind of like, you know, you kind of have to sacrifice your student to save your son as a duty of a mom. But it was conflicting. It was, she, she's all, like, definitely a bad person. Because she basically killed all of her students. Lured all, all of her students into the forest to save her son. And, like, killed so many of kids. So she's, she's terrible. But it's just kind of, I don't know, there's the death. There's some death to it. The final boss fight, though, it was not, uh, like, there were, there were a lot of many boss fights. Only one, I thought, was challenging and fun. Like, the, what was it, like, the dragon-looking guy? That guy was fun. Like, that was challenging. It was more like Monster Hunter type of challenge. Everyone, I think, including the chat, was saying that boss fight was amazing. But then any other boss fight after that was like mediocre. It wasn't that good. It was kind of like okay. <laughs> okay at best. Um I mean this is not really a fair fight because Final Fantasy 16, I only played it for two hours. Visually, it was amazing. Like if I were to play this game. Back in 2006, I would actually, I might die. Because I remember seeing Final Fantasy VII Lost Child or Lost Children or whatever, the, the movie. Um, when, when I was watching that movie, I was like, holy shit, that graphic is amazing. Advent, Challenge, Advent Children, that's right. When I watched that. And the graphics was amazing. And I was like, oh my gosh, Square Enix, you're going to make your future games. If you can make your future games in the graphic of Avent Children, this company will rule the world. The graphic is amazing. And this, this is crazy. Just imagine. Because Square Enix, they're always making players think like they're playing the games of the graphic of the Avent children, but that should never happen until Final Fantasy 16. Final Fantasy 16 was the graphic, the same graphic of Avent children. Any, any games before that, all kind of, I don't know, it was almost kind of like a, it was not, it was not as good as Avent children, graphic wise. And, oh man, I don't know. But it's Final Fantasy 16 Advantage, written by Yoshi P. I love Yoshi P. You know, I love that guy so much that I freaking uh, went to Tokyo Game Show by myself and got like selfie with him and everything. Music is amazing. Gameplay wise, like the, the field monsters are fine, but then the bosses that I fought so far, a lot of, like, what's it, like, the, the action buttons, I think they called it. I think they called it action buttons. They just kind of flash the button, and then you, know, you just have to press the button in, like, the limited time, and then they do the, like, the fancy cool things. It's kind of like, eh, you know. Yeah, or the cinematic attacks, it's like, eh. But then again, the Bayonetta Origins, Cereza, and the Lost Demon, the, the boss fights were also... Except one. Except one. It was all like... Eh, I don't, I'm, I'm conflicted. They're both... They're both lack on the same thing. The boss fights. It's kind of like... It could, it could be so much more. It could be so great. You know what I'm saying? Ah, oh, honestly, I don't know, man. 
It's so hard. Both great choice. There is nothing wrong with having Final Fantasy 16 winning the title of Weep Wednesday 2023 Game of the Year. Same thing with Bayonetta Origin Series and The Lost Demon. Also deserves a win. Ah, I'm so conflicted. <laughs> I'm so conflicted, dude. The thing that the Bayonetta Origins Series and The Lost Demon does not have, but has in Final Fantasy 16, is they do be making out nonstop. Final Fantasy 16, they love to, like, I don't know, get down for some reason. Oh man, dude. Oh, I'm like, I'm going to choose this, but then I'm like, but then the Cereza, but then the uh, and then the and then the, and then the uh, like, oh, I am, I'm so conflicted. Oh, I don't know, man. It really goes to show Final Fantasy 16 was an amazing game. Because I only played it for two hours, whereas Bayonetta Origins of Raisin and the Lost Demon, I played it for like 50 hours, 40 hours, something like that. And it really is competing so well with the game that I fully finished. You know what I mean? So that's like a huge compliment to Final Fantasy XVI. Da. Da. I don't know. But then the. Oh. I forgot to mention. Bayonetta, the great thing about Bayonetta, Origins, Cereza, and the Lost Demon, is that you basically have the control scheme that I so, so, so love from The World's End With You. You know how when you play The World's End With You on DS, like, you can basically control the top half and the bottom half at the same, like, at the same time. But then if, if that was overwhelming, you can only control the bottom half. And then, like, you can still progress through the story. I really like the gameplay of something that was completely new. You can't... You, you controlled Cereza with your left control. And then you controlled the demon with the right control. And then you can mix and match and do, do the fight together. So when you pull off really cool combo, it f I felt so smart. Like I felt like big brain because I as like as a Cereza, I had to sometimes just run and then I have to control the demon to fight the monster. But like you're literally controlling two characters at the same time and it worked out. And, and, and the control scheme, the battle control, all that, it worked off so well. It wasn't, there wasn't any moment that I was angry, that I could not control the camera. Like, it worked out beautifully. You know, I, I'm gonna put Bayonetta. Bayonetta Origins. The, the, the control was exactly what I wanted from a video game. Final Fantasy XVI. Amazing game, but it, but there was a little bit of you know the control when you when you control the game it, it's the same old same old. Whereas a Bayonetta Origins, it was beautiful. And and sometimes if you don't want to control the demon, and you just want to control Cereza, because you're just moving around the field and you're not fighting, you just put the demon into like a little doll and Cereza just walked around. So you just needed to control Cereza. Like, beautiful execution. You win the game, man. You win. You win. Bayonetta Origins, Cereza, and the Lost Demon. You, you take the cake. Excuse me, much better matchups than last year? 
Last year, I wanted to suplex Kate. What? The, what? Who was the winner last year? I'm pretty sure the last year's winner was also good. I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about, man. Because the Mary Skelter, it was winning only because of a good matchup. It just was lucky. Dude. Yeah, last year was Persona 5R. Deserved. Last year, winner was Mary Skelter. Not true. Last year, winner was like 600 hours long. What are you talking about? No, man. No. This, I guess it's not, it's not this year, but 2023 Weeb Wednesday Game of the Year. Picked by Kate Lovely Momo, Bayonetta Origins, Teresa, and The Lost Demon. Easy clap in the chat, please. Easy clap in the chat. Everybody clapping, everybody clapping. Deserves, deserves a great praise. What a great game. If any of you have not played Bayonetta Origins, Teresa, and The Lost Demon, go buy the game, dude. Go buy the game and play the game. Story, very good. Music, very good. Battle mechanic, amazing. Visual, stunning. It was, it was honestly it was very satisfying game. Very good, very good game. Should I also buy a Switch to play it on or just the game itself? You know what? First buy the game and then buy the Switch later. Where's Loop 8? That's an easy Final Four. You guys, I don't, you, you guys say that, but then not that many people actually voted for Loop 8. So like, y'all, y'all are gaslighting me, man. Alright, now. I will give you guys four minutes to finalize your votes. At 3.15, I will announce the winner of the audience vote for the 2023 Weave Wednesday Game of the Year. Make sure you go there, vote. Let's see here. So far, we got 226 responses. Currently, all the votes are legit so close. Super Mario RPG and Final Fantasy 16 tied. Tied with the 2020, uh, 22 votes. And Autopath 2, it's lacking only one vote. With the 21 vote. Fire Emblem engaged with the 20 vote. Those are the top four games currently. Like I said, I will close the result in three minutes. If you have not voted, make sure you go and vote. It's it's very tight. It's very tight. Um, I believe last year and the year before that was almost a landslide with the yakuza zero winning easily and persona 5r winning easily this year there were a lot of great games if you haven't seen the list of the full list of the game that i have played last year oh no my google chrome my Google Chrome died. I will, I will show you once my Google Chrome comes back. I mean, you can see it if you just click on the link. But I'll, I'll read it out. So yeah, you know, I'm a... Here you go. Here's the, the full list.
so you can read. There you go. The full list goes Fire Emblem Engaged. Uh, it was Engage, not Engaged. Whatever. You guys know what I mean. Mary Skelter Finale, The Great Attorney, Tales of Symphonia, Octopath 2, Bayonetta, Cereza, which is the Bayonetta's origin, um, Cereza and the Lost Demon, um, Dragon Quest Monsters, The Dark Prince, Trini Trinity Trigger, Volcano Princess, Dokapon Kingdom, Itchern Odyssey 3, Loop 8, Rain Code, Dragon Quest 3, Honkai Star Rail, Akiba's Trip, Sea of Stars, Monster Menu, Room Factory 3, Tales of Zestiria, Tokyo Psycho Demic, Little Goody Two Shoes, Star Ocean, The Second Story R, Persona 5, Tactica, Super Mario RPG, Exit 8, The Princess Guide, Final Fantasy 16, Stonks, 9,800. And I will be closing the response in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right, no more accepting. And the winner is, drum roll please. Final Fantasy 16. Woo! It really won by one vote difference. Final Fantasy 16 won. The 2023 Weeb Game of the Year. The second place is Super Mario RPG with the 24 votes. So it's literally one vote. And Octopath 2 on the third place with the 21 votes. And the Fire Emblem engaged, or engaged, whatever, uh, 20 votes. The Great Attorney, 19 votes. Honkai Star Rail with the 19 votes, so they're tied. Sea of Stars with the 16 votes. Dokapon Kingdom, 15 votes. I'm actually pretty dang surprised that Dokapon Kingdom actually got 15 votes. Because I didn't think that many people watch the Dokapon Kingdom video. So I'm kind of like, how do you know Dokapon Kingdom? But anyways, um... Persona 5 Tactica also really surprised with only 11 votes. I thought people really, really liked Persona 5 Tactica. Um, surprised that it wasn't much higher. Um, Tales of Symphonia. Rain Code with 7 votes. Surprised. Loop 8 with 6 votes. Y'all jokers. Joker. Dragon Quest with three, uh, Dragon Quest three was a six votes. Akiba's Trip with six votes. Interesting. Little Goody Two Shoes, Stonks. Surprised so many people actually. I mean, it's five, but five is a lot for Stonks. I th I thought, and only three people voted for Bayonetta. Sorry, is it because I finished the game? It might be. It might be because I finished the game that they're. Not interested for me to play until the end because I already played it till the end. So that kind of makes sense, but still kind of surprised, you know, maybe if you were to watch the game, it wasn't that exciting, maybe? But I, I highly recommend the game. You, you should really buy the game and play it. Dragon Quest Monsters, The Dark Prince, three votes. And The Volcano Princess with the three votes. Itchin Odyssey, three with three votes. Rune Factory 3 with 3 votes. <laughs> and I, this, this, I cannot believe. The Princess Guide with 3 votes? I'm like, really? I don't think they have watched me play this game. I personally found it fun to play the game. But like... Y'all did not find it fun to watch. So I don't know how it got 3. Mary Skelter Finale with the two votes. 
bro. Joe Care? I don't know. I think I who 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 did that? <laughs> Tales of Cesteria. Star Ocean, the second story, R only got two votes. That is crazy. This does not make any sense. The Star Ocean, Star Ocean, the second story, R, and the Mary Skelter finale should not be in the same place. <laughs> One is a definitely better game than the other. Exit A. Fire Emblem Engage. Oh, sorry. I should include Engage and the Engaged with one vote. It's because I changed the title. Oh, okay. If I add Engaged, it's 21. Okay. Octopath and Fire Emblem Engage uh, tied with the vote. It's because I changed the D. But it's, it had only one. Okay. And then Tokyo Psychodemic, one. That's it. But yeah, lots of lots of people. It's it was very very close. Thank you everyone for voting for the twenty twenty three Weeb Game of the Year. Now we know Final Fantasy sixteen. That shall be the game that I'll play until the end. In year 2022, I played Yakuza 0 until the end. Year 2023, I played Persona 5R until the end. Year 2024, I will play Final Fantasy 16 until the end. But you know what's crazy? I actually don't remember what happened Yakuza 0. What happened at the Yakuza 0? I don't remember. I actually don't remember what happened to Yakuza 0. I don't remember. And the person of 5R. I, mean, uh, I don't remember it. Will that include DLC? Depends on the DLC, I guess. His friend was ordered to kill him. That's not the end. That's not the end, man. That's like near the end, but that's not the end. Good spread, good spread. Good thing this vote was t anonymous. Was it? It was. But I know who voted this. Little goody two shoe. That's this. This shit is lowly. <laughs> this shit. This shit is lowly because he basically said around this time yesterday, he said, I voted for a little goody two shoes. <laughs> so I know this I know this is lowly. <laughs> how to how to out yourself in the anonymous vote? By tell what you voted at the same time you voted. I didn't ask. Well, I put I put that I I suspected that Final Fantasy sixteen will win the game of the year of twenty twenty three, and it actually did. Kinda crazy, dude. Maybe I'm a fortune teller, maybe. He's looking. How long did it take for me to finish Yakuza 0? Five months? Something like that. And then, how long did, did it take for me to finish... Persona 5R, eight months, something like that. <laughs> How long? Why is the game getting longer and longer? How long will it take for me to finish Final Fantasy 16? It's only 60 hours. Wait, how? 
Oh, I remember. I remember uh, Persona Five R. I was over ninety hours. Because Persona Five R, my save file was over ninety hours, right? Wasn't it? I think it was. It was over one hundred hours. Yeah. Pfft, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's six sixty hours. Sixty hours. Nothing. Maybe it will take me like four or five months to finish it then. Final Fantasy 16 cannot be longer than Persona 5 plus Royal. The Royal part wasn't that much longer. I think um, I had 96 hours. Before the royal part kicked in. And then royal. I only had. I think royal was only like 10 hours. Yakuza. I finished in March. Wait what? So you only 5 months? Wait you mean May? March is 3. March is 3. May is 5. So I was right. 5 months. Okay. 